uh, so we're going to do a review here on the game Scorn, uh, which just came out a couple of days ago. Uh, and we played on uh, the Xbox uh, Game Pass. Uh, interesting game. Uh, the premise of the game in sort of short explanation form is it is a horror puzzle FPS game, uh, more heavily on the puzzle elements than the combat. Um, it has a very heavy influence uh, from uh, HR, uh, I don't know if I'm saying it right, Jiger or Geiger, however which way you say it, um, which was the inspiration for the Aliens movies and Prometheus. So if you're a fan of those, I would say you'll dig the art style and, and the design of everything uh, significantly. Um, but that's kind of the basic premise. It's more of a puzzle game than it is a combat game. So just do be aware if you're not much of a puzzler or you don't like going through and figuring out uh, what's going on, you may not want to play this game. Uh, but I would say at least watch somebody play it either on YouTube or on Twitch. Check out my VOD if you'd feel like or anybody, you know, that you enjoy watching their content, because I feel like the art direction and stuff like that is worth seeing, even if you're not particularly interested in playing the game yourself. Uh, the setting uh, of the game sort of takes place on a very alien world. They do not really explain where you are or what's going on at any particular point. Uh, and that is by design, the developers have said pretty openly that they were going with a concept where they wanted you to feel like you were just thrown in to a place and you didn't know what was going on. And that's pretty much exactly what happens. <laughs> you really don't at any particular point know exactly what is going on or where you are. Uh, it's very light on plot or story uh, and more sort of open to interpretation. Uh, the gameplay, as we kind of already covered a little bit, is more puzzle-based than it is FPS-based. There is some shooting elements. There is some combat. It's um, few and far between, and there's really only one what I would call a uh, boss fight, you know, like sort of a unavoidable battle. Uh, most every other type of combat can be avoided. Uh, it is not a stealth game, but you can employ uh, stealth-like tactics to avoid most of the battles if you like to um you don't really gain anything for fighting i think it's mostly a risk that's not worth taking so you know but everybody you know can play the game how they would like to if you would prefer to try to kill everything that's a personal challenge you want to try to levy against yourself you know go for it um Plot, uh, you know, story, uh, again, it, it, the game is, is, is vague intentionally. I'm going to share here briefly what I think uh, my thoughts on the story are, or such as it is. Again, it's mostly open to interpretation, um, but I'll share here briefly my thoughts on what I think my interpretation of the story is. Um, so from this point on, it's going to be a little bit spoilery. Uh, though it's sort of like not spoilery at the same time because it's an open inter interpretation, so you don't really know whether or not I'm right or wrong. But warning anyway that we are going to talk about the story such as it is in Scorn. Uh, so to sort of briefly explain what seems to happen, you get thrown into an alien facility or city of some kind. You're a humanoid-like character. Um, you certainly have the outer physiology roughly of a human. But there's a lot of things about the character you play that feel not human at the same time. Like maybe it's some sort of uh, offshoot or, um, you know, biologically re-engineered of some kind uh, humanoid-like person, but not quite human as we know them. The biggest one being the fact that the character has a ridiculous amount of pain tolerance and ability to survive tra traumatic damage that would kill a normal human as we know it. Um, so that is really the, the biggest thing that to me suggests that this is not just a, a regular run of the mill from earth kind of human. I think this, this character that you're playing is some sort of uh, differentiated human offshoot, whether uh, they, their origin is completely different or if they were uh, interacting with this alien race and thus were changed by it or, you know, how exactly it comes about. 
but you essentially spend all your time sort of puzzling through this facility, uh, not really knowing what it is you're trying to do. But there are some things that stand out. The first one being that you seem to switch characters uh, about one fourth of the way through the game, maybe a little bit less than that. Uh, you start out as one character who seems to die, and then you seem to switch to another character. There's a lot of evidence to suggest that this switch happens, uh, not least of which is the fact that when you switch to the second character, you kind of fall out of an egg sack like thing, which suggests you were sort of born out of this sack. Uh, and you lose access to items and weapons you had uh, on the first character. And then there's a fan theory that seems to make sense to me that uh, once you have journeyed through the game for a little bit as the second character, you are attacked by and seemingly um, sort of, you know, hosted onto by a parasite of some kind that um, all of a sudden gives you access to some items you had on the first character, but you had not acquired on the second character. And as you sort of journey through the game, it seems to corrupt you more and more. It seems to be altering your body in some kind of way and ultimately seems to be killing you or at least turning you into some sort of uh, new life form that is drastically different than the humanoid-like uh, character you start out as. There's also a scene toward the end of the game where you're strapped down onto a table and you actually remove the parasite uh, and it has a human-like face, suggesting again that this parasite could be the first character. And that is really what the, 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 the fan theory kind of comes down to, is that the first character ends up becoming the parasite that infects the second character and then ultimately kills you at the end of the game, which is probably the biggest spoiler is the fact that you do die at the end of the game, or at least turn into another life form, and perhaps you have some form of consciousness. It's not really clear. Um, some other details that seem to emerge as you get down to the end of the game is that uh, there's a lot of architecture that you run into that has human-like uh, characters engaged in various acts of um, shall we call sexual reproduction. Uh, it's very uh, suggestive and sort of pornographic in nature, um, which to me suggests that whatever this alien species was and however it came into contact with the humanoids that you play as, they, they had a sort of appreciation or worship of uh, human reproduction. You know, they were... They were seemingly fascinated by it. They built monuments to it. Um, that suggests to me that um, this species of aliens that's very bio-focused, all their architecture, all their machinery, uh, everything seems to be bio-focused, that perhaps the, the way that humans reproduce and create you know, babies and such as we know it was of particular uh, specialness in their eyes. You know, they, they seem to worship it and want to, you know, copy or improve in some kind of way uh, the human biological structure. Um, and somehow or another, reproduction was important to that, which would sort of make sense if you're entirely bio-focused um, that the production of more bioenergy, more biological life would be, you know, a huge benefit to your structure of your entire society. It's never made clear in any kind of way whether these aliens were not capable of reproduction as we know it, or uh, why they were so fascinated with the human reproduction system, but it seems to me that they were they were worshipful towards it. Uh, and then you have a scene toward the end of the game where your character is um, seemingly connected to a sort of hive mind or connected consciousness that connects together all the people that were a part of this civilization or at least, uh, you know, a sort of aristocratical or higher tier 
of people that were a part of this civilization. Uh, it seems to stretch all over this sort of like temple slash palace type of structure. Um, and once you're connected into it, you're then able to leave this sort of like more fragile body that you inhabit for most of the game and step into a new body that seems by my definition, sort of reinforced and more powerful. Um, you then use this new body to sort of try to step through this doorway towards this sort of gate or wormhole of some kind, uh, only to be, again, attacked by the parasite, which the theory is is the first character, and then <clears throat> eventually consumed by the parasitic transformation that turns you into this sort of immobile pillar of flesh looking thing that's like very like i don't know warhammer 40k chaos type stuff so that's kind of a basic synopsis of of like what happens in the story and then my interpretation of that building off of the fact that it seems like the aliens worship uh the human reproduction system and this sort of networked consciousness that you get connected to my theory is that uh, somehow or another, these aliens encounter the humans. Uh, they sort of like begin to worship and, and learn about human physiology and biology. Somehow or another, they come to the, the idea that, you know, reproduction is important and they begin to worship that. But they also seem to come to the conclusion that the human mind is important and they build this sort of... Um, connected consciousness and my theory of why they would want to do that or what they were trying to accomplish is perhaps they figured that by connecting all of these human consciousness and brains together they could create sort of a supercomputer type thing or a super consciousness and open a gateway perhaps into another dimension perhaps a wormhole into a different part of space not really sure what they would want to you know exactly accomplish with it but when you go through the doorway and you sort of are looking down at this like portal type thing before the the very end of the game it feels like it's it's some sort of gateway or portal into another place uh so my theory on that is that they achieved what they wanted to achieve by connecting this consciousness together and open this gateway uh but by opening that gateway they let through something uh, that was a sort of parasite by nature and began to corrupt their biomechanical architecture and break it down and destroy it. And that's basically what you kind of feel like you see throughout the game. As you get deeper and deeper into this complex or this city or whatever it is, things become less uh, ordered and less uh biomechanical in nature and just sort of become more bio they become more corrupted they become more broken down you run into more and more of these sort of like corrupted looking life forms that attack you and try to kill you uh there's a part in particular uh a couple of uh, maybe an hour hour and a half before the end of the game where you encounter this sort of like massive creature that's sort of uh, molded itself around an elevator and uh, you have to sort of like rip it apart to get access to the elevator. And then ultimately you end up sort of like in a very gory scene, end up going through the creature uh, as you ride the elevator up to the upper parts of the, of the city or the, the structure that you're in. Uh, and all of this sort of points toward this, this rapid breakdown of the civilization as it becomes corrupted and sort of co-opted into this parasitic life form or some kind and as it as it intensifies as you get closer to this palace or temple like structure that you get to near the end of the game where you find the portal it feels to me like that's sort of an origin point like it came from this portal came through corrupted perhaps all the the people that were connected to it or i don't know what and then it gets out into the rest of the city and just starts like just wreaking havoc on everything uh, the only parts I don't really understand, you know, at least in my rough mind canon of how this game works, uh, is why, if they worshipped human reproduction, does your character come from an egg, for example? You know, did they 
deem the process of uh, impregnating a female and having a baby like too dangerous or uh, too inefficient. You know, they decide at some point that human reproduction was was of of note and worth worshiping, but ultimately uh, a lesser form than they could have perfected by, you know, growing humans in sort of like egg sacs. You know, I'm not really sure. You know, I it, initially when I was playing through the game, I thought maybe the humans that you were playing as were like slaves or um, being used to power the machinery in some kind of way uh, or something really kind of negative. But as I as you get through to the end, you get to the temple and you see all the worship of of the human reproduction system and fornication. It feels less like the humans were uh, thought of as lesser and that more like they were worshipped. Um, maybe some were used to fuel the machines and some were elevated. I don't know. There could have been a class system. I don't, I'm not really sure how how you differentiate between uh, the scenes you see at the end that seem to worship humanity and scenes at the beginning which feel a bit like you're disposable. You know, maybe it's a little bit of both. I'm not really sure. But everything is up for interpretation. Everything you just have to figure out for yourself. Nothing is really explained. Uh, it's just one of those types of games. Uh, so if you have differing opinions from me or you have other thoughts you might like to share uh, about your interpretation of Scorn, uh, feel free to drop by uh, the Twitch and check us out over at uh, Rev Brucifer, which you can see on the screen in the uh, bottom right hand corner. We stream uh, every Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and Saturday uh, from 5 p.m. CST until at least 10 p.m. CST. Or uh, feel free to comment uh, down below uh, if you're watching this on YouTube with your thoughts on what you think the story of Scorn is trying to tell us uh, and anything you may disagree with that I that I said here. I like to have open debate on things like this. This is obviously all theory. Uh, I don't think the developers are ever going to really explain the game. I think they, they wanted it to be uh, vague. It doesn't necessarily feel like a game that's going to get a sequel. It doesn't feel like we're going to sit around and wait for Scorn 2 uh, to explain the gaps in the story. But who knows? You know, maybe the game did well enough. They'll decide, hey, yeah, let's do Scorn 2. Uh, I think this game was in development for a long time. It took them a really long time. They were a small team when they made it. Uh, so, you know, I, would, I wouldn't hold my breath that it's going to happen too soon, you know? So, you know, but yeah, um, overall, uh, to give like a rating on the game, a little something cut and dry. Um, I mean, this type of game isn't really my thing. I mean, to be fair, but we are playing it during October, which kind of the whole point of October is to get outside of my comfort zone, play stuff I don't usually play. Um, this definitely hit the mark for something I normally wouldn't play. Um, but you know, being a big fan of Alien and being a big fan of the art style, that that's a huge like that's a huge boon. You know, like if you're into this like art style and you really like that, you know, kind of inspiration and you're like a fan of the Aliens movies and stuff like that. This is definitely like like I say, worth seeing at least somebody else play, if not playing it yourself. Uh, for that alone, it gains a lot of points with me. Um, the combat system is, you know, it's kind of janky and whatnot, but like, that's kind of also the point. So, you know, it's hard to really, you know, deduct from the combat system being janky because like they wanted it to be that way because it's not, you're not meant to feel strong. You're supposed to feel like kind of vulnerable and like everything can kill you. Uh, and they definitely nailed that because I did die a fair few times. Um, so I don't feel like I'm going to dock it like too hard on that because, you know, that, that really is the focus. Uh, I think the biggest thing that will be divisive about this game is the vagueness of the story. The fact that they don't really explain anything. So either you're going to like, uh, sitting down and trying to like theory craft through that or jumping onto the Reddit or something like that and talking about it with other fans of the game, or you're going to be like, that was stupid. I feel like I wasted my time. They didn't tell me anything. I don't get it. Two different types of people there. Personally, I kind of like the theory crafting and a little bit of open endedness. I do really like a linear story and like a, a, a good plot and everything like that as well. 
Um, but I don't mind departing from that a little bit as long as there's intriguing enough elements to keep you going. And that I feel like this game does have. It does have those intriguing enough elements to make you want to look around the next corner and see what's going to happen next even if they don't ever explain exactly why that happened or, you know, what it's happening for. So for me, all those things are perfectly fair. So, you know, given, given how good the, and, and the sound design I think is also worth of note there, there's no like, um, there's no like music per se to the game. It's, it's mostly like sort of atmospheric tonal kind of, oppressive sounds in the background as sort of like constant sort of like dread that builds in the background which i feel like suits the game quite well um so the the sound direction i think is also quite good uh the only thing that really stood out as an overwhelming negative in the game and this may be something that's a little unique to me or maybe a little bit unique to the microsoft store version of the game uh, and certainly is something that that is a little niche anyway, uh, because one, you'd have to be a streamer for it to really bother you. And two, it bothers me particularly because I'm not only a streamer, I'm a VTuber. Uh, but I did have a sort of glitchiness the first day I played it where I would seemingly walk across a load point in the game where it would load uh, maybe the next portion of the area. Uh, and it would cause a uh, interaction of some kind with all the video using uh, devices running on my computer. So my OBS and my VTubing software and cause them all to kind of semi-crash. Uh, this happened two or three times on the first day I played it. And then on the second day I played it, it didn't happen again. I don't know exactly why it was happening. I don't know exactly what was triggering it. I did check my drivers. I did make sure they were all up to date. Uh, I did reboot my PC. Like I did everything I could think of in order to try to circumvent this problem. Uh, and I don't know if I fixed it or whether or not they fixed it or, you know, if there was some sort of patch or what. I tried to look up, you know, Google on this. Uh, I didn't find anything about it. But that is like the one major bug I experienced. I didn't experience any other crashing. I didn't experience any soft locks. Uh, anything of particular nature that that kept me from playing the game. Um, so I, I, you know, I kind of deduct a little bit for that. But it, it again, it's extremely niche of an issue to have um, impacting me in in two sort of very specific ways. Um, but leaving all that aside, I'd probably. I probably feel like I'd rate the game about an 8 to an 8.5 out of 10, I feel. Um, with the asterisk that it's definitely not a game for everybody, you know? The goriness, the the blood, the detail, all that kind of stuff. If you've got a, if you've got a light stomach, you're not into that kind of stuff, it's definitely going to put you off. You know, it put off some people in my chat. Um it doesn't really bother me. I don't really get bothered by that kind of stuff, but you know, you do have to sort of put an asterisk on there. It's definitely not a game for everybody. Uh, obviously the puzzling elements could turn some people off. The vagueness of the story could turn some people off. You know, there's, there's some things that you should know going into it uh, that, that may be off putting for you. I would say though, if you don't want to play the game, if you're not really into puzzling and you're not really into, um, you know, the goriness and stuff like that, but maybe you can handle it. Like it doesn't like put you off, like make you queasy, make you sick or something like that. At least watch somebody play it, you know, go in and find a YouTuber that you enjoy or a streamer's VOD that you enjoy and just kind of like go along for the ride, you know, and enjoy somebody else playing it. Uh, Cause I think it's worth it. I think, I think it's very unique. It's very interesting. Uh, and you know, you should check it out. You should definitely give it a shot. Uh, that's it for us. That's our quick and dirty scoring review. Hopefully we'll see you guys over in the, uh, the Twitch channel.